messed with me. My dog was sick. It was raining. I was feeling very sorry for myself. I was not happy. So I thought I would turn on the television. I'm not sure why I thought that was going to make any better because usually there's nothing good that's going to, you know, perk you up. But it was interesting because when I turned on the television, I happened to turn to the surface for the rededication of a war memorial for our brothers and sisters who served in Afghanistan. And the person who was speaking was Julie Payette, our Governor General. And she began by saying, I don't know if she began because I might have caught her remarks partway through, but the important thing, the, the remarks that I caught were she talked about how this memorial was for our brothers and sisters who had served and fallen. And she said that really serving one's country and serving us was an act of love. And then she said, as St. John said, greater love hath no one than this, than to lay down their life for their friends. I had a better day after that. I was so impressed with that witness. Imagine our Governor General standing in front of a mixed crowd of people, doesn't know who's listening or who's watching, and is standing up, speaking on behalf of, who is she speaking on behalf of? Queen. Her Majesty the Queen. Not just Canada, but she speaks on behalf of Her Majesty the Queen. And speaking on behalf of our country, quotes words of Christian scripture. My friends, that is what witness looks like. That's what a testimony looks like. That's how sometimes we ourselves are ministered to by the witness and testimony of someone accidentally who we coincidentally have to bump into at any time. I was impressed that she quoted scripture. I was impressed that she simply said it in that gallery, but I was lifted up just by hearing St. John's words. Jesus' words. Sometimes we think testimony or bearing witness or evangelizing means we have to go out to people who have no faith and somehow talk them into becoming Christians. Sometimes we think we've got to have, to have exciting words and extreme turns of phrase because God is sending us out to evangelize people who have no God or have no faith. But sometimes God is simply calling us to witness to and offer our testimony to people who simply are bad Christians like ourselves. Maybe someone here today who we see come to church every Sunday and serve God in many capacities. Sometimes even the faithful need to hear a word of testimony and a word of witness. And sometimes we forget that, particularly in the church, because sometimes we're so absorbed by the secular needs of the church. Sometimes we think about the fact that we need to tell someone, thank you for doing such a lovely job with the flowers today, or for organizing the coffee hour in the kitchen. Or Teresa for giving up her Sunday worship to lead worship for us in Zach's absence. We often think that we need to thank people for doing those jobs, but sometimes people around us, even in the community of faith, simply need to hear our personal testimony. Our word, even the priest, sometimes needs to hear a word of faith, a word of witness, a word of testimony. There are many countries in our world where the church is the sole voice against a corrupt and evil government. And Christians in those places are persecuted daily in the ways we hear the writers of Hebrew describe today. Our witness to them can't always be personal, but our witness to them always has to be in prayer. We need to be always lifting up those Christians in other places who enjoy, enjoy the freedom we enjoy today to simply walk into church and express our faith. And we sometimes think to be a witness, we have to be someone amazing. 
We see this list in Hebrews, and we think, whoa, these are the heavyweights of the Bible. But let's think about the list and the persons that are listed here in this great cloud of witnesses. We all know about the weaknesses and failings of David and Seth. But let's look at some of the other people. It's the lesser known lights. Barak, a great leader, called by God to push the Canaanites out of Israel. The prophetess Deborah comes to him and tells him his mission. And he says, I'm not going unless you come with me. So he made Deborah come to war with him because he was afraid to do it himself. And Deborah said, I'll come with you, but let me tell you, you will have victory. But you yourself will not have the ultimate victory because a woman will defeat him. And in fact, the woman, Jael, was the person who finally killed the Canaanite leader. We look at Gideon. We remember the whole story of Gideon, what a great Christian leader he emulates as someone who pushes forward in faith, doing God's will. But at the end, they begged Gideon to become a king. He said no. But instead he said, I'll take some of the booty from the last army we defeated. And he took the gold earrings of one of those kings and made them into an image that he and his family worshipped. So Gideon's great witness to God ended in idolatry and apostasy. Or perhaps the worst on this list is Jephthah, a man called by God to lead an army against the Ammonites. But he didn't want to go. He wasn't certain of his own skill. So he said, Lord, you have to be with me. You have to guide me. Give me a sign. If you will be with me, Lord, I will sacrifice the next person who passes by my tent. The next person who passed by his tent, is that going to the story? His daughter. Was his daughter. And so he killed his daughter in order to win the baby. So when we step back and we think, ah, perhaps I'm not great enough to be a witness to God. Perhaps I'm not faithful enough to give my testimony to others. Let's look at those people called out by the letter to the Hebrews as being great witnesses to God and realize their imperfections and their failings and their weaknesses and their humanity. God asks us only to offer our humanity, our imperfect faith, our imperfect witness, our imperfect testimony to encourage others, to support others, to let them know if they're having a bad day that they are not alone because they serve a mighty God, a God mighty enough to impel us, imperfect as we are, to say the word of faith. And to not be embarrassed, to not be afraid, to not think, what will people say? Maybe I'm too Christian. Maybe I'm too religious. Maybe this isn't the time and place. But if we're not serving God and we're not witnessing to Him, who are we serving? Who are we witnessing to? As the writer in Luke says today, these are difficult times interpret the times you are in. We live in a post-Christian era. Words of faith, words of scripture, testimonies of our personal faith experiences are not the norm anymore. We will never feel safe or comfortable or be surrounded by others who think like us. But that's what Mary witness is about. The other part of the letter to the Hebrews is about the kinds of sacrifices those witnesses to Christ endured. Unlike the prophet Isaiah, we are not likely to be sawed in half for what we have to say. We might be ridiculed, we might be ignored, but we don't serve those who don't believe. We serve a God who asks us to plant the seed, and he gives the word. Sometime this morning or today, someone might need to 
hear a word from you. Let it be a word about your faith. Let it be a word about the God you serve. Let it be a personal testimony and witness to how your faith in God has served you. There will be all kinds of other people who can give them a good word. Who can say to them, have a nice day. But it will only be you as a Christian witness who can say to them, this is how God has acted in my life. I offer this to you as a free gift and an indication of God's grace.